We are going to move on to now the final question, which I, I feel is is the heaviest, and and I believe is anchored more on what we are doing right now. How can we best support survivors of sexual violence in a practical way? We are looking for practical solutions, but how can we practically support survivors of sexual violence? We are looking for at least two. How to best support survivors? Um, one of the things that we're believing, number one, is to create the linkages to the relevant referral pathways. So when it comes to um, psychological support, how do we link the survivors to counselors who they can get um, assistance pro bono? When it comes to legal advice, how do we link them to ensure that they are able to go to courts um, and get um, proper support in courts? But secondly, one of the things that as Grits Kenya together with Crew, I know Crew is on board today, um, CCGD and a few other partners, we have come to realize is that most of the survivors um, unfortunately are also survivors due to, of course, a lot of reasons and sometimes also the cause of economic injustices which contribute uh, to being perpetrated. And so we can also support them and I believe like what we are doing through a fund we call Jasiri um, by the MasterCard Foundation to be able to help the survivors because what next? When you are perpetrated and you go um, to court and you get psychological advice, will you be able to go back to the place in which you are perpetrated? Unfortunately, most of the times it's not possible. And so if you are to relocate, where are you relocating to? Where are you starting a business? Where are you moving to? And so to be able to cushion um, our survivors to you know, go beyond the legal and the psychological support, the best way to support them also is economically, um, to be able to cushion back and continue being, you know, the integral part of society that they are. Thanks. Thank you so much. Let's snap for her. You can do better than that. Let's snap. Thank you so much. We have, uh, we have one. A hand here. Yes, yes. And then we have one over there, and then we will um, end that session. I know we have really beautiful answers. Please tell your neighbor, since you can't tell me. <laughs> tell your neighbor. My name is Happy Olal from the Social Justice Centers. The best way to support survivors is to walk the journey with them. And uh, I appreciate the grassroots uh, uh, activists who walk the journey, the whole journey, from the moment the case uh, is reported to the hospital, to the police station, to the courts. But there are some people I know who will go on with the journey until the course, until the ruling and all the judgment time. So for me, sometimes in forums like this, you can say you can support them economically, yet grassroots HRD sata pesa tu ya kuenda yo makadara locals inabidi ya tumie zake ama aombe. So I like when you're talking about support to gender-based violence survivors, let us also think about support to grassroots human rights defenders and women human rights defenders who walk the whole journey with, with the survivors until they get justice or until sometimes they don't get justice. evidence, And we cry and go back home. Asante. Wow, thank you so much. I'm Victoria Tieno. I'm a member of SSB Network in Kenya. And I also convene a community-based organization in Madari called the Women in Grassroots Surprising. I think all has been said, but I wanted to add on safety and security. Because our survivors sometimes on a picture threats. They are safety. So I think uh, this is uh, very important. And also the defenders who are also working with them. Security and safety is paramount. So I think this also should be looked I'm sorry, I really had to insist on this. My name is Nyagudye from Teen Seed um, and also the Wild Feminist Network. I wanted to say that a lot of us forget that we need to put the survivors first. So what does that mean? Decentering ourselves, because we know so much because of the work we do, but then remembering that every survivor is different and you should center them to take ownership of the support process. For example, if 
you're supposed to present all the options and suggest. But if a survivor does not want to report, you cannot force them. If a survivor is not ready for counseling, you cannot force them. If a survivor says, you know, I'm not ready to go to hospital, the best you can do is say, we recommend going to hospital within this amount of hours. Um, this is the process. And if you don't do this, we won't be able to record evidence. This is going to be the consequence. But also, if they don't want, it's OK. Let them take ownership. Even in small things like um, you've gone to hospital, and the doctor is doing the examination, and this person has been violated. But the doctor is saying, you know, uh, I want to take a photo of this because you know we need to document. But that's violation to this survivor. And another survivor might be OK with that. So letting them take ownership of the support process based on their needs, not what we know. Tunaona, tunasikia, na tutabonga. The voice.